In this video I'm going to show you how to pickle ash keys but because I'm not a massive fan of pickled foods I'm also going to have a go at fermenting them as well. I'd seen about a year ago other people pickling ash keys so I've never tried them. Here I am trying it for myself. I have picked the ash keys. They're nice and young, nice and fresh. They taste okay, they taste palatable just as they are. Maybe the pickling process will improve their flavour. So I'm going to show you my method, which will be a little bit experimental in this video. The great thing about collecting ash keys is you can collect a lot in a short space of time. Here I have my empty clean jar. Best to be sterilised, but a good hot wash in the dishwasher is okay. Next I want to add the ash keys. I'm going to avoid putting these stalks in, so I'm going to get the best of the keys and keep the stalks out. And I want to fill that jar. So of course I've got a little bit of work here to do to make sure I'm only getting those young seeds and none of the stalks, the woody bits. I don't think they would be very tasty at all. And I don't want any of these leaves in. That's the leaf from the tree. It's only the seeds I want. As you can see, I'm just cutting the thickest part of the stalks and leaving those very fine bits on. I have finally filled the jar. It's taken a while. Now I'm gonna add some ingredients that are gonna give the vinegar some flavor. I've looked online for different recipes, looked in my cupboard, gathered some bits and bobs and I'm going with instinct. I'm going to add some whole peppercorns. This is not an exact science at all. I'm just adding a few things that I think would go well. A few cloves. I'm going to add a cinnamon stick. I'm going to push that down into the leaves. I've got a couple of bay leaves here out of my garden. And push those down the side. And I'm going to sprinkle in some ginger. I don't have any whole ginger, so I'm just going to put a bit of ginger powder in. I'm also going to add some raw local honey to sweeten it because vinegar can be too tart for my taste so if we add something sweet it might just make it a bit more palatable for my liking anyway you don't need to do this if you don't want to you could just use vinegar this is a raw food that is quite bitter like a lot of the wild greens so absolutely to sweeten it up with something I think would just help us as people living in modern times who are used to a much sweeter diet. And let's face it, we want to make this as nice as we possibly can. Otherwise, it just won't be worth foraging. We'll certainly find out when it's ready, whether it's a food worth bothering with next year. But it's all about experimenting. As long as you know it's edible and it's not poisonous, Hey, there's a lot of fun in trying things out and experimenting with different recipes. Next, I'm going to add the vinegar. You could use a pickling vinegar. Um, I always use organic cider vinegar just because I know it's good for you. And we're going to pour this into the jar and we want it to completely cover all the plant material. We don't want there to be any plant material above the level of liquid it could spoil and get mouldy okay i'm just getting the rest of that honey mixed in with the vinegar i'm just giving it a mix now because i can feel some thick parts where the honey honey is but over the next few weeks i shall be picking it up every so often and giving it a shake so it should all mix nicely together. Push down all the 
plant material, all the spices, under the level of liquid. All done. This will go in my pantry and apparently three months it needs to sit. I would probably shake it every few days or every week um, just to make sure the honey and the vinegar is totally mixed. And yeah, good experiment. We'll see how we get on with that. And next I'm going to try fermenting ash keys. Total experiment, but it's worth a go. I'm going to make a basic brine now. When we ferment foods we don't want to use tap water, so you need to use filtered water. And we're also going to use salt to make the brine. This needs to be sea salt. I use organic sea salt. It's got, not gone through other processes and it hasn't been, got preservatives in it. It's all natural and that's really important. So, in this jar I've put in two cups of water. I'm now going to add about one and a half tablespoons of salt. It doesn't need to be super exact. And then they always recommend using a wooden spoon to stir to dissolve. So that will take a little bit of stirring now to get that salt all dissolved into the water to make that brine. Now I'm adding the ash keys. I've resorted to using my fingers rather than the scissors. I can get more of the stalk off. Luckily it was quick to forage because it's not quick to process at this stage. I hope it's worth it. Next I'm going to add some ingredients that will help flavour it. So I'm going to add three cloves of garlic. This is all for flavour. I've got a couple of bay leaves out of my garden. Black peppercorns are going in. Again, I just put in just a few. Next, I'm putting in some black mustard seeds. I've fermented foods before and used things like peppercorns and garlic and bay. Some of the flavours that I really enjoy, and so I go very much on instinct as to what ingredients I put in and what's in my pantry. So it's, it doesn't need to be an exact science, you don't need to follow recipes, there's something quite fun about just going with your gut. Speaking of the gut, of course we're going to add some brine now and this then will become a fermented product. Fermentation is all about building up good friendly bacteria which is super good for your health. Now the salt acts like a preservative. It also locks in all the nutrients. It also, over time, it almost cooks in its own way the material that you're actually fermenting. So the ash keys will become tender, soft, preserved, and all the goodness will be kept in them. Now I've Googled online for fermented ash keys and found no recipes anywhere. So this may well be a first. I'm sure it isn't, but it's certainly not something I've found has been written about. Let's hope it's groundbreaking stuff. That's that done. Next thing, I need to label it, put all the ingredients on it. It's really important when we're experimenting with foods is to label and record what we've done and when we've done it. Because if it's a really good recipe, you'll be gutted if you don't actually write down what it is you did. This will go into a dark cupboard. I won't put this in the pantry, I'll put this in the kitchen so it's warmer. Because the warmer it is, the quicker it will ferment. Now, the fermentation process gives off gases. So every couple of days, I'm just going to just open the lid a little and let any gases out. But maybe three weeks, four weeks and I can try it out. I might decide I need to leave it longer. We shall see. But that's all done and ready. Thank you for watching. And if you've ever experimented or followed a recipe with ash keys that's been successful or not, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks again. See you next time.